Alright, so uh, now that all the water routes are dealt with, I guess it's time to just go through the various hullabaloo that I've passed through. Uh, that's actually... I'm, I'm sure you already know what that's a reference to, but there was also a con Wait, what? What? Okay, then. Uh... Yeah, a Sky Pokemon! A Sky Pokemon was, uh, mentioned by Brendan on the Pokenav at some point in, I think, Moss Deep. I, it was done off-screen, so, um, I wasn't able to point it out at all. Anyway, yeah, uh, Pacific Log uh, doesn't have too much in it. I'm just gonna see what there is. Uh, what is this? Free TM, okay. Return is always a good move. Um, I believe every Pokemon that is able to learn TMs can learn it. I might consider giving it to somebody, maybe uh, Mimsy, because of Stab. Also, last video, Evolution, uh, if you didn't notice it, an evolution occurred. And I didn't point it out because the commentary was done totally in post, and I wasn't even watching the video while it was happening, so... Yeah. Anyway, we'll see if there is actually anything here. I know that there's... Yeah, here's a trade offer. Um, get a horsey for a Bagon, which is dumb because you can catch horsey here. But um, it, maybe if it's not ex if it's not here, it's on the route right next to it. Let me check. I know this is thrilling gameplay, but I, I am curious now. Yeah, the current routes. Uh, in Ruby and Sapphire, that trade is actually stupider though. And uh. Okay, I gotta explain why it is now, because here's another thing I have to talk about. It's stupider because you trade a Bellossom for a Corsola. You can get you can get Corsola by fishing in this town, and Bellossom requires a Sunstone, and if you're playing Sapphire, there's only one Sunstone in the whole game, and if you're playing Ruby, it, it's hard to get more, so it's really stupid to give away your only possible Bellossom. Anyway, Mirage Island... What a what a shock! We can't see it today. Um, there's something like a one out of sixty five thousand chance of Mirage Island appearing on Route 130. Did I already talk to you? Yeah, I did. Um, it's not actually one out of that number, though. It's like X out of that number, where X is how many Pokemon you have. Like. Basically, every Pokemon has a personality value between 1 and 65,000, whatever it is, and if the randomly generated personality value of the day matches any of the Pokemon on your current team, then Mirage Island will appear. Um, it has Why Not on it as the only wild encounter, and a single lychee berry, and that is it. For something that secret... Why? Why the hell is it so useless? I think lychee berries actually are really good. I don't know if they cure any status, but they do make the best Pokeblocks in the game. But my god. I just don't get that at all. Okay, so anyway, here's Shoal Cave. Uh, which is another an, an optional area, but it's kind of cool. And, uh... Zubat might be the one encounter in here that isn't unique. I don't actually remember exactly what you can find in here, but... Okay, well, there's feels. Yeah, that, that's what I was wanting to show. There's feels. But, um... Let's put up a repel so I don't keep running into Zubats, because apparently they have a really high encounter rate. This guy uh, asks for shoal salts and shells. Say that five times fast. And, uh... Basically, the gimmick of this cave is that there's two different states it can be in. Like, right here, you see you can't reach that. That's because the tide is low. Uh, every time it, like, becomes either 3 or 9 o'clock a.m. or p.m., uh, the tides will change, so you can come back and it'll be different. And also, the items do respawn, but, uh... Basically, when the tides are down like this, 
there's a few areas you can reach that you can't normally. So, I'm gonna show off that area, uh, if I can find it. This place is sort of a maze, but it's not that bad. Nice heal, and yeah, these little piles are the salt. Uh, kinda weird that they would even have a sprite for the missing salt. I guess it's just to show that they respawn later on, I don't know. But yeah, I think you have to find four of each island, island, four of each item, which is exactly how many there happen to be in the cave. But then since they can respawn, you can always just come back later and grab more of them. But let's just get through this place. Hello, random trainer. Except I guess you aren't a trainer. Oh, free focus band. Okay, I'll take it. And salt, and what's out here? Before I push the strength rock. More salt. I don't believe the salt or shells do anything on their own. You might be able to sell them, but... Yeah, if you get four of each, give it to the guy, and you get a shell bell, which is kind of like a crappier version of Leftovers. It heals you based off of how much your attack did. Like, if you do a lot of damage to something, then you'll get a relatively large amount of HP back, but you don't really heal that much. Anyway, this is the ice room, as you can obviously see. Only only reachable when the tides are down. And I suck at ice puzzles, but it's pretty easy, I guess, because I'm getting through it without too many problems here. Let's see what the item is. Give that to power up Ice Beam. What are you currently holding? Silk Scarf? You don't have any... Okay, you have Hyper Beam, but yeah, let's power up Ice Beam. Why not? <clears throat> As I've said before, the items that boost various move types aren't actually that good, but for in-game, they're usually the things I use, because they're easy to come across, and the better items usually aren't very easy to come across. And we got hail, which I'm not going to use. And I will try and get into a few encounters here. If it doesn't show up, I'll just say what is in here. Again, I'm sure most people already know, but doing this for completion's sake and for people who haven't played the games. Yeah, here's Snow Run. I actually really like Snow Run. Um, it's also in XD, and I didn't use it in that game, but I would if I ever played that game again. Not that I can, since I mailed it to Tim, but that's beside the point. Uh, I particular, particularly like Frostlass, which is the fourth-gen only female evolution. If they do make Ruby Sapphire remakes, I definitely want to have a Frostlass on my team. It's just a shame that you can't get it until so late into the game. Anyway, I'll see if I can dig out of here. Sure. So, yeah, that's about all we can do in here, because I don't think the guy will take just the salts. Actually, I'm almost positive that he won't, so I don't know why I'm even going back in to check. But, yeah, you can't. I, uh, might come back when there's higher tide. It'll have to be another segment, because I don't want to record after 9 p.m. today, and then wait to upload the video until then, but anyway, uh, I guess one last thing we can do for this video is head back to the abandoned ship, and I'm going to need my Whalemer for this, so let's uh, put you away and get you out, and then teach Whalemer surf, and dive. I know this is wonderful to watch, but hey, at least it's sped up. And dive. Don't know why you get HM 8 before you get 7, but then again, it's not like you ever get the HMs in the correct order anyway. Whatever. And they always change between games. So, Let's ho head over to the abandoned ship. Because, as you may remember from the last time I was here, there is a room with water in it. 
and we can indeed dive here. So I guess this is going to be my first use of dive in the playthrough. I think it's a pretty cool mechanic. You do move very slowly when you're underwater, but do you really expect anything else? That's really the only thing you can complain about it. I mean, I've seen suggestions that fly should work that way, but I think that would probably be a lot more irritating because people hated it in Skyward Sword. And okay, let me go back in there. Check the upper right corner. Cushing, sparkle, sparkle. Yep, we've got a hunt for keys now. And Waterstone. And we've got lots of crap in here. Uh, room 4 key, and... Where was the other thing? Shiny trash. So I guess it's the uh, diamond ring that Wally threw away. That's what I'm getting out of that. I don't get why it's stuck fast, but the door... What does that even mean? Is that, like, proper English? Room 6, key, and trash, and probably more trash. Yeah. So we go through all this junk, and this room apparently doesn't have any sparklies. Only luxury ball in the game right there, by the way. I think... Yeah, you gotta... Okay, room 2. Is that it? Guess so. And going all the way back, and going here, and there is the scanner, which is what we came for. A uh, scanner, let's see what it even looks like. I just imagine it as a flatbed scanner, but yeah, it's more like a PKE meter or something, I don't know. It does nothing, but there's a character in the game who wants it, so let's go all the way back. which didn't take very long at all. And fly over to Slateport and find the guy who wants it. Who I think is just kind of standing around out here somewhere. Uh, it's not you, is it? No. He might be in one of these places. Uh, it would be nice if I actually knew. I know it's a scientist, but I don't know where he is. I thought he was outside. And I hope there's not some other stupid prerequisite, like, oh, you can only give it to him after you have the 8th badge. If there is, I'm gonna actually complain even more, but, uh, yeah, this is the part of the game where I wish to complain very much. Oh, here we go. Okay. Deep Sea Tooth and Scale. This is the only place in the game where you can get them, and you can only get one per file, and you can only get it after the 7th gym. So, really, really late into the game. I'm going to get the scale. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have anything to actually show on screen while I complain right now, but I guess I can look for treasure and stuff. Okay. Um, if you don't already know, the scale and the tooth are used to evolve Huntail and Gorbis, or evolve Clam Pearl into Huntail and Gorbis. And I have to just ask a very reasonable question right now. Like, has anybody ever used one of those in their team, in Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald, without, like, trading it in immediately? Because I actually did use a Gorbis in Emerald. I sent it in at the very beginning of the game, and the only reason I did it was because it is such an obscure Pokemon that I knew nobody had ever freaking used one before, and I wanted to see what it was like. So, let's, uh, let, let's go through this step by step. You're this late into the game. If you don't have your team finalized, it's probably something like Snow Runt that you're going to add just very, very late into the game, you have a water type by now. There is no question of this, because you need it to surf, and to dive, and all that other stuff. So, I guess that's it for this diving spot. I don't know where any of these go. I don't have my map open or anything, so this is going to be a kind of crappy little video, but anyway. While checking seaweed, there are chinchus. And let's see if I can find one. 
just bring it up as a visual aid. Come on. Any day now. <sighs> Never gonna find one. Anyway, there's clam pearls. Uh... Yeah, if you happen, you, you're this far into the game, you see this, a little pink ball sitting in a shell, and you think, well, you know what, every water type in the game so far has been lame. I'm going to try this one. And so with your newly found uh, deep sea item that you got if you went on an obscure side quest that most people would probably miss. It says it raises the special defense of Clam Pearl. Alright, so that's cool. You give it that, and then you decide to trade it, and it evolves. It's not like anything in-game tells you that this happens, so if you don't have a guide, you're just gonna have to guess. So let's say you do that, and now you suddenly have the Gorbis, and then you keep it, and you're happy forever. That is never, ever going to happen. And no trainers in the game use Huntail or Gorbis. I also have to question how the hell a clam can evolve into an eel, but... Did I just come out of this? I'm so confused right now. Because I'm not really paying attention. I thought there was another spot. There was. What, have, what am I doing? I don't know, I have to... Rewatch the video and see if I missed anything. Anyway, uh, that's not my main complaint. My main complaint is the fact that you get it so late into the game, you can only get one per file, and you have to choose one of them. So it's basically like I'll compare it to the fossil Pokemon, because Lilip and Anorith, you have to choose one or the other if it's Ruby or Sapphire. In Emerald, you can get both. But with those, you can breed and keep making more of them so you can, like, offer one to a friend who has the other one. With this, if you breed, you're just going to get a Clam Pearl. So, Huntail and Gorbis are as like just as rare as Legendaries in that they are one per file, except they're actually worse because they force a trade and nothing in the game tells you they exist. And, to make things worse, they are extremely mediocre water types. Like, if they were actu if they were really good water types, like Milotic or something, I could maybe understand it. But neither of them are that good. Especially Huntail. Huntail sucks. So, just... My, my question is, Game Freak, what the hell were you thinking? Why are they so hard to get... And why are they not good if you need to make them this hard to get? In the later games, they aren't quite as bad, because it is possible to get duplicates of the Deep Sea items by uh, wild Pokémon holding on to them. But in this, no. Only from the scanner quest. So, that is my rant about those. And I guess I'm done diving here. I'm... Not finished with all the diving and stuff, but I'm going to stop for right now because I'm done with the rant, and next time we will continue with this, and I'll make sure that I, like, have actually gotten all the stuff in the area. So, see you then for diving stuff, and moving on to the secondary Team Aqua hideout thing.